Hey guys, welcome back to G2 Outdoor Adventures. So we're right in the beginning of fall here. So this is like the first week of October. We're gonna put together a little cook video here for you. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this fall weather. For us, the, the fall is definitely our most favorite time of the year. So the leaves are starting to change a little bit. It's getting colder in the evenings. Deer season's starting to go on here. So it's an excellent time to get outside, start enjoying the campfires, the, the smell of the campfire, the crackling sound of it. Obviously you got the uh, camp food that goes with it and the hiking and the camping. So hopefully you guys get outside and you guys could uh, enjoy that outdoor adventure yourself. But so for today, we're gonna make some biscuits and gravy and we're gonna make it in a cast iron 12 inch Dutch oven. So we'll talk about that Dutch oven a little bit. We'll talk about how we make our biscuits and gravy and hopefully you guys get outside and enjoy the outdoors. So as far as our location here, we're always in Southern Kentucky basically, but we're right in the backside of our property here. So this is a, a pre-existing campsite that we use regularly. So we split up a little bit of firewood. Now the firewood we got is kind of punky, so I'll probably have to go out and gather some better dry wood here. But now it's been raining for about 24 hours also. So we got a bunch of cedar branches we got here. And so these cedar branches, you could kind of categorize them a little bit as far as like pencil lead size up to like finger size. And that kind of gives you the, the beginning of a good fire lay. But now these are a little bit damp on the outside and I'm trying to avoid splitting a lot of wood and making this project too difficult today. It's really about just eating a good meal really is what I'm after here. So as far as my fire starter goes, we're gonna go back to the, uh, a very, very easy way here, but we got petroleum jelly and we also have like the makeup cotton swabs. And I'm literally just gonna dunk this cotton swab in that petroleum jelly and then go ahead and light it. And it gives you kind of like a candle effect. It burns for a good minute, gets nice and hot, and it's a really, really easy fire starter. So I thought it'd be worth taking a look at our Dutch oven here. So I got a Lodge brand Dutch oven and it's the 12 inch round one. So if you guys already have a Dutch oven, that's great. If not, and you're looking for one, here's a couple of things you're gonna want. So on the bottom of it, it actually has the three legs on there. And that's so as you're using it, it's meant for cooking on campfires. So it brings it up off the ground. And another thing we're looking at is the lid of our Dutch oven. So instead of having like the dome shaped kind of lid, it has the lip on there. That lip is so you could put your uh, coals on top. So whether you're using the uh, charcoal briquettes or using actual live coals like we are, but it holds on to the top of the uh, lid so it doesn't roll off on you. And when you're selecting your cast iron, I'd kind of recommend going with a USA brand. Um, not saying that USA is necessarily better, but they make really good cast iron. It's probably the best way to go. And when you're looking at your cast iron, make sure that your lid can rotate all the way around 360. Sometimes your cast iron can be oblonged and you're not gonna be able to rotate your lid and that's gonna cause problems as you're trying to cook. Because as we're cooking, we're gonna put our coals around the cast iron and every so often you're gonna wanna rotate this a quarter of a turn or a half turn. And that way you can make sure you're getting equal heat distribution all the way around your cast iron. So if I rotate my Dutch oven clockwise, I also wanna rotate the lid counterclockwise. And that way we're moving the heat back and forth. You'll get a nice even cook that way. So our cast iron's cold right now. We could put our hands on it, no big deal. But we're starting to get a bed of coals here. So I'm gonna move my cast iron closer to the campfire and we're gonna preheat this. Now we don't want it so hot that you can't touch it, but you definitely want it to be warm. And along with that, we're gonna kinda cheat here today, but we're gonna make some flaky biscuits 
but we're going to take these biscuits out of the cooler let these guys warm up so we'll put this closer to the fire let it warm up once that gets a little toasted there we'll go ahead and put our biscuits on so our wind keeps moving on us here today but keep in mind we're going to put a donut around this cast iron but if your wind is blowing really hard and all your heat's getting blown away from your cast iron you might have to have more coals on the wind side facing the wind so that way the heat blows into your cast iron into your dutch oven also these cold steel shovels here if you guys check out my amazon link i got different products like the cold steel shovel or the uh, mora garberg knives really good products but it helps our channel you guys can find that on our amazon affiliate link we'll have that in the drop down box below So now on our Dutch oven, we want an internal temp of about 350 or so. So like I said, we got our coals in a donut. They're about a three inches around it. There's nothing underneath it at this point. But like I said, also we could pick this up and we'll rotate it. Let's say 180 there. And we could also rotate our lid here. And that'll keep our heat moving around as far as keeping it all even there. So let's take our lid off. We'll try to put it somewhere clean. Keep from uh, getting too much dirt in there. We'll put some of our non-stick in there. You guys can see the steam coming out there a little bit, so it's already getting warm. Not quite hot enough, definitely not 350 yet. But we'll open up our biscuits here. Whoa, oh. Elizabeth was gonna karate chop it, but <laughs> I guess they want it to come out. Why don't you stand on this side? And you can help me put them in there. Here, grab, grab those two there and split them apart. So doughy. Yeah, they're supposed to be doughy. Look, and just lay them in there. Like Take a closer look here, guys. Come on in. And again, this is why that 12 inch Dutch oven is a great size, because it's big enough that you could actually cook for quite a few people. You could also cook for yourself, make a smaller meal. But if you got a campsite with four people in there, they could handle it with no problem. We'll spread them out a little bit. All right. Then we will grab our lid again. Let these guys start cooking and we'll come back and we'll check it. All right, we could toss some of these bigger pieces of coals off here. I could smell them cooking, so I think we're a little bit overdone on some of them. So these are looking really good. So we can put these to the side now, and we'll go ahead and keep them in the Dutch oven here so it stays warm. But we'll take them off the heat, and we'll get our sausage started here. So we're gonna relocate our donut of coals here, stick them in the middle, use my glove hand, get some of these hot ones in there. We'll put our number eight cast iron skillet on there. Let that warm up and then we'll toss our sausage on. So for our breakfast sausage here, we got some homemade sausage Athena and I made. That's from one of the hogs that we butchered. And like I said earlier, guys, this Mora knife here, this is the Mora Garberg carbon steel, super good knife. But don't forget if you're interested in one, Buy it off Amazon and use my affiliate link. 
just kind of helps support that channel, allows us to keep going. A lot of times too when you're cooking, especially campfire cooking, but if that skillet's too hot, literally take your skillet off the heat. And just keep bringing it back and forth as you need more, more heat to it. So you guys can see on my sausage here, it's been done, but I wanna overcook it, I guess, a little bit or brown it up so we get all those little crunchy bits on the bottom. So this is done. Also, I took off the coals from the lid of our Dutch oven here. Now this thing retains a lot of heat even after you uh, take it off the fire. So you guys can see our biscuits here are nice golden brown on the top flaking apart. We're gonna put these to the side and that way we could put our, oh boy, those are hot. We could put our, uh, our meat here in the pan. We could start working on our gravy. We don't have to get every little bit anyways. All these little crumbles will be real good in our gravy. So we'll put that to the side. Try not to get it too hot here. Put our lid back on, and that's just to keep these warm. Most of that heat has dissipated now, but it'll keep it nice and warm for you. So let me grab my gravy mix here. I'll show you guys what I got. We'll start making our gravy up. So my fire is a little bit too hot, and my skillet's pretty warm. So we're gonna toss some water in here right away. Hear that sizzle. And again, if this is getting too hot, just pick it up, take it off that coal, take it off that fire, let it cool down a little bit. So I got a combination here of flour, salt, pepper, and a little bit of powdered milk in here. And so that way I could use water and substitute the milk for the powdered milk. All right, so we're gonna make a plate up here. Toss a biscuit in there. You want to broken up or you want a whole biscuit? Whole biscuit. You want to break it up or you want me to do it? Yeah. Let me do it? All right. Mm -hmm. Buttery, flaky. Don't get no better. Get some sausage on there. Put that gravy on it. Ready for it? Yeah, yeah it's gonna be hot. Yeah. We'll eat it, and if you ain't gonna eat it, I'm gonna get it. No. All right, we'll make a few plates up here, guys. Enjoy our breakfast, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to make some ginger and nutmeg tea for today. So I wanna make our nutmeg and ginger tea here. So I got my, my cup, I got my chunk of ginger in there. I also got a couple of nutmegs in there, put that to the side. But we gotta get our water going here. So for my water, we want it where it's slightly too hot to drink, but hopefully not where it's boiling. And if you guys didn't know, if you put your lid on there, it's gonna hold the heat in there, make it boil a little bit faster, and kind of help you from getting your, uh, your dust and ashes and stuff in there. 
So we'll give that a few minutes, let it get nice and hot. We'll pull it off and I'll show you guys how to do that. So this water is plenty hot here. We'll pull that off, take the lid off here. It's probably good right there. Toss that ginger in your hot water. Now we have one of our nutmegs here, and you want a real fine grinder on there. There is no set amount for this. I just do it by however flavor that I like it. I don't want to be stingy with it. It has some really, really good aroma to it. They say it's actually good also if you have insomnia, if you have a hard time sleeping at night. And then of course to top it off, we got some local honey here. And I'm not one for being stingy with the honey, obviously. All right, guys, I'm going to sit back, watch this fire burn down, enjoy this cup of nutmeg and ginger tea. Hopefully you guys liked today's episode, and we'll catch you guys next time. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small